welcome to A Guide to Every Deck in Modern. Today we're looking at Tron. Tron, also known as Mono Green Tron to distinguish it from other Tron variants, but generally just called Tron, is one of the longest lived decks in the modern format. It's a ramp deck that seeks to assemble all three Urzatron lands, Urza's Mine, Power Plant, and Tower, to generate 7 mana by turn 3 and cast expensive colorless haymakers. Expedition Map and Sylvan Scrying find missing Tron lands, but can also find other lands later in the game. Ancient Stirrings can also find Tron lands, though less reliably. Chromatic Sphere and Star filter colorless mana into green for scrying and stirrings, allowing you to play your Tron lands on curve. Tron has the distinguished honor of having the best mulligans of any deck in the format, since generally all you need is a way to assemble 7 mana by turn 3 and the rest of the deck will take care of things. You should nearly always mulligan any hand that cannot assemble Tron by turn 3. Once you do assemble Tron, you can play any of various large threats to win the game. Either Karn is usually your best play. Karn Liberated can remove the best permanent your opponent controls or start picking off lands. Great Creator has a number of options to wish for and can shut down various strategies with targeted hate cards. In the absence of any specific need, your best bet is usually to go for Liquid Metal Coating and start picking off lands. Wormcoil Engine is good against creature decks and burn. Walking Ballista comes down very large due to the Tron lands and can pick off small creatures. It's also often your best bet for racing combo decks. Oblivion Stone and Ugin the Spirit Dragon deal with problematic board states, though they cost too much to use before turn 4. Later in the game, Sphere, Star, and Stirrings can draw more threats. The deck contains so many filtering cards and threats that it's actually difficult for Tron to not find something worthwhile to cast. Sideboarding and how to beat it Relic of Progenitus is the most common flex slot, being a good card in various matchups that replaces itself and often the first card to be boarded out. Other cards to commonly board out depending on matchup are Worm Coil and Ugin. Tron is often made fun of as a deck that pilots itself, or being brain dead to play. While your decisions do matter, they matter a lot less than most other decks and you can easily stumble your way into victories. Because of this, Tron is among the most newbie friendly decks in the format, being a good choice for new or inexperienced players, especially given its longevity and unlikelihood of being banned. A lot of the sideboard are wish targets for Baby Karn and shouldn't be brought in except in cases where speed matters, such as Tormod's Crypt vs Dredge. Besides that, the usual cards to bring in is Nature's Claim for artifacts, enchantments, or to gain life against Burn. The best way to attack Tron is by hitting its mana production by destroying its lands. Common hate cards are Alpine Moon, Blood Moon, Damping Sphere, and Spreading Seas, though anything that costs 3 or more may be too slow on the draw. Uniquely though, these cards aren't actually win-the-game cards versus Tron in the same way hate cards usually are, for example, Rest in Peace against Dredge. If the opponent isn't pressuring the Tron player's life total, they'll eventually naturally draw enough lands to cast their spells normally. Permanent-based hate pieces can also be dealt with by Oblivion Stone, Blast Zone, Beseju, and Nature's Claim. The actual most effective way to fight Tron is by permanently destroying its lands with cards like Fulminator Mage. Tron is traditionally good against slower mid-range and control decks such as Jund and Blue-White Control since it generates a huge mana advantage over them and can play back-to-back must-answer threats, running the opponent out of answers for them. Tron is worst against fast aggro or combo decks, especially those that don't care about their permanents such as Burn and Storm. Tips and Tricks Baby Karn retrieves cards from exile, not just your sideboard. You can use things like Relic of Progenitus to get back important cards that have been exiled. The sequence you play your Tron lands in matters. You may not always have exactly all three on turn three. It's best to pay for spells and abilities with mine and power plant first, so you'll have the most mana from tower afterwards. Similarly, when attacking Tron's lands, destroy mine and power plant first since it forces them to pay for things with tower before reassembling Tron. However, if they have four or more Tron lands, destroy tower first to stop redundant towers from generating more mana. Remember to put fate counters on permanents you'd like to keep around with Oblivion Stone. You can destroy Wormcoil Engine with Oblivion Stone or Nature's Claim in response to Exile or Bounce effects to leave yourself with Worm Tokens. Ulamog is indestructible so it doesn't die to Oblivion Stone. Chromatic Sphere's ability is a mana ability and can't be responded to. You must choose the color of mana Sphere or Star makes before you see the card they draw. Most often you'll simply want green, but you may want another color, for example to pay for Dismember. If you need to gain life in a pinch against Burn for example, you can point Nature's Claim at your own permanence, Chromatic Star being the best target since you'll still draw. If you already have a ton of mana and can search for another land, it's probably more worthwhile to find something like Sanctum of Ugin rather than more Tron lands. The way you pay for spells using the Tron lands can matter in terms of leaving yourself more options. 
For example, let's say you want to grab Relic of Progenitus from the sideboard with Baby Karn, but you don't want to activate Relic immediately. If you tap Mine and Plant to pay for Karn, you'll then need to tap Tower for Relic, leaving you with no mana if you pass the turn. Whereas if you tap Tower and one of the other two to pay for Karn, you can float a mana to pay for Relic and still leave a land untapped. You should almost never reset the game with Karn Liberated using its minus 14 ability since if you've gotten to 14 counters you're probably winning the game already. The exception is if you might lose the game at any moment, for example if you're at a low life total against Burn. If you do restart the game with Karn, you'll begin on the play and any creatures you control will be able to attack immediately. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Tron. I want to thank my fellow players in the Magic community for whom sharing their experiences helps make these guides possible. You can find additional resources, such as an up-to-date decklist, in the description. If you think I left out anything important or got something wrong, please leave your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned to see what deck we look at next time.